Hey folks, WallyDM here, and today we're going to take a look at a co-op combat puzzle that you could run in your game. Now this is a complex encounter that's geared more towards an experienced GM, so with that in mind, I will be providing the full written version of this puzzle on my website, wallydm.com. You can download that today, and if you're a member of the Patreon at the $2 level or higher, you're also going to be able to get the PDF and the map version of this puzzle today on Patreon. I'll put links to everything in the description below. Now the original idea for this puzzle was created by my friend Owen from the Talking is a Free Action podcast. Now Marvin and Owen have a fantastic podcast, so I definitely encourage you to check them out, and in fact they had me on as a guest a few months ago so I'll put a link to that episode in the description below. But we have a lot to cover today and we're going to take each part of this puzzle step by step so let's get started. This one's called the Chamber of Vistas. So our characters are going to arrive in a flooded hallway with six inches of grungy opaque water via teleportation. Now this water is going to have a swamp like smell that's going to reek of decay. Now at the end of this flooded hallway are going to be two archways or two doors and they're going to go into two different puzzle sections or two different rooms and we're going to call them puzzle room A and puzzle room B. Now any character that comes up and looks through these archways is going to see two different rooms. They're going to be identical to each other, but they're going to be mirrored. In puzzle room B, off to the left are three different alcoves with paintings. And in puzzle room A, off to the right, in three different alcoves are going to be some more paintings. Now again, these archways are going to have mystical arcane sigils that are racing along the edge of the archway. And if a detect magic spell is cast, then I would probably say that these doors are going to radiate transmutation magic. Now our puzzle is going to begin when one of the characters steps through the archway. So let's say our rogue comes into room A to investigate. And as the rogue enters the room, this doorway or this archway is going to turn into solid wall. And now the only thing that can be seen is an outline of a door on this wall where that archway used to be. However, our rogue is able to communicate with the rest of the party. They're able to talk to each other just fine. It's just going to be a wall here with a painting or a outline of a doorway. And there's no way that the rogue is going to be able to get in or out of room A. Now still nothing's going to happen to the puzzle until someone steps into room B. So let's say our wizard finally goes in and decides to investigate room B. And when she goes into room B, the archway is going to disappear and we're going to have a solid wall formation with what looks like an outline of a door. However, our wizard in room B, our rogue in room A, and our fighter and our cleric, they can still verbally communicate with each other with no problem whatsoever. Now this is a combat co-op puzzle, so as soon as both of the rooms are occupied, we're going to roll for initiative. Now on initiative count 20, two ghouls are going to arrive through the teleportation device and they're going to attack our fighter and our cleric. Now we're also going to do two more things to our initiative order. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have both our wizard and our rogue. They're going to act on the same initiative order. So have both of them roll an initiative die and take the highest one. And both of those two characters will act on that initiative count. And then finally, we're going to add the murky water in the room to the initiative order on initiative count five, because it's going to go up and raise as the puzzle or the combat progresses. So taking a look at our battle mat again, we have our ghouls that are going to arrive on initiative count 20, and they're going to come out and they're going to attack our cleric and our fighter. Now again, our wizard and our rogue acting on the same initiative count are not going to be able to help with combat. Their turn is going to need to be spent trying to solve this puzzle, and the sooner they solve the puzzle, then the sooner that everyone is going to be safe. So let's take a closer look at these puzzle rooms and the alcoves and see what our wizard and rogue are going to have to do. So the setup for puzzle room A and puzzle room B are very similar. Now they each have three different alcoves and I did mistakenly say paintings earlier. These are actually going to be murals. So inside each of these three alcoves is going to be a mural that is painted on the wall. Now there are two recesses in each alcove, but only alcove one is currently active. And what I mean by that is if the two characters were to come over and look at these murals, 
murals, they're going to see a black and white painted scene on the wall and embedded into that mural are going to be two colored orbs. So in puzzle room A, there's going to be two blue orbs and in puzzle room B is going to be a green orb and a red orb. Now at the beginning of the puzzle, all six of the murals are in black and white. They are grayscale. And in addition to that, alcove two and three in both puzzle rooms A and B, the orbs are translucent. So they are very similar set up to alcove one, but the orbs cannot be obtained. And our wizard and our rogue, if they are to take a look at these murals, they're going to be able to notice that they're going to be able to take possession of these orbs and they can remove them from the wall. Now the final setup of the puzzle is the shared wall between puzzle room A and B. There are two more indentations or niches in these walls and there's a bronze plaque underneath each of them. On the left is going to say send, on the right it's going to say receive, and that is identical on the other side. So the send in puzzle room A is going to be the receive in B, and the send in B is going to be the receive in A. So our wizard or our rogue are going to be able to determine with a passive investigation or a DC-12 investigation check that they are going to be able to remove these orbs from the alcoves and they could send or receive them to the other side by using the niches in the shared wall between the rooms. So on their shared initiative, the characters can freely speak with each other, but they're going to need to use their movement and their action to retrieve an orb from the mural, place it in the send or receive depository, and then take it from there and put it back into the wall. Now we are allowing a lot of free talking back and forth and this is during combat. So I highly encourage you as the game master to bring out a 30 second timer. And by the end of this timer, the characters are going to have to have decided what orbs they're sending back and forth and what orbs they're putting into the wall. So let's take a look at our two murals. In puzzle room A, the mural is in grayscale. Again, it's black and white, but it appears to be a painting or a mural of a volcano volcanic island. There are two blue orbs that are set into the wall. In alcove 1b, this mural is also grayscale and it appears to be a painting of a tropical island with lots of vegetation. There is a green orb and a red orb that are set into the mural that can be removed. So our 30 second timer has expired and now the characters have to have used their action or they're going to need to pass their turn. Let's say that they're both going to take one of the orbs from their walls and send or receive one to the other side. If you were a player participating in this puzzle, which of these orbs would you send or receive to the other side? Pause the video now if you'd like to think about the solution. Did you get it? Great. Let's go over the answer. So in order to complete the first portion of this puzzle, our rogue is going to need to take one of the blue orbs and send it over to puzzle room B. And our wizard is going to need to take the red orb and send it over to puzzle room A. Once they receive these, the wizard can put the blue orb into the wall and the rogue can put the red orb into the wall. And when they do this, the mural or the painting on the wall is going to turn from black and white to a full color painting. Now what we are doing with our orbs is trying to establish symbolization. So with the blue orb, that is going to start representing water and islands and things like that. Red is going to be things like fire, lava, things that are hot, mountains and things of that nature and green is going to be vegetation trees and plant life now that alcove 1a and 1b are solved these orbs can no longer be removed from the wall they are permanently indented into the mural however this is now going to activate our second murals in alcove 2 but before we continue with the puzzle that is the end of the turn for our rogue and wizard let's see what's happening with the rest of the party so after being attacked at the beginning of combat our fighter and cleric now find themselves in melee combat with two ghouls now they can take their turns however they see fit and again they can still hear and communicate with the rogue and the wizard that are on the other side of the wall they just can't get to them but as we get further down into the initiative order, we're going to come to initiative count five, and that is where our water is going to take place. And coming out from the walls, our water is going to go from six inches to one foot. 
of water. So not only do we have the two ghouls, but now we have this murky sewer water that is starting to rise as combat progresses. Oh, hold on. Let's stop right there for just a quick second. I want to talk about the water portion of this puzzle. On initiative count five, the water is basically going to go up by a foot every round. So if you want to make this a little bit of an easier puzzle to run for yourself and for the characters, you can remove this section entirely and run the rest of the puzzle as is. Or maybe the water only goes up if the player characters that are working on the puzzle put an orb in the incorrect position. That's totally up to you, but I just wanted to tell you real quick that the water part of this with the raising levels could definitely be optional. Now that's going to take us back to the top of the initiative order and our ghouls are going to continue to attack. Now I do recommend either setting a five minute timer or perhaps just roll a d4 and note the result. Now, if at any time during combat, the ghouls are dead or the number of rounds with the D4, or if our five minute timer expires, then two more ghouls are going to arrive through the portal and join into combat at initiative count 20. So our fighter and our cleric have their hands full in combat. Let's go back to our rogue and our wizard and see how they're doing with the puzzle. So in round two, we're back with our wizard and our rogue. And as you can see here, the second alcove is now active. We have black and white or grayscale paintings on the walls, but we now have orbs that can be removed. We have a blue and a red one in alcove 2a and we have a green and black orb in alcove 2b for the purpose of demonstrating of this puzzle i don't have any black gems so we're going to be using purple that's going to represent black so now let's take a look at our murals or our paintings in alcove 2a this is a grayscale painting of a mountain range covered in trees there is a blue orb and a red orb that are set into the wall in alcove 2b we're going to see a painting or a mural of a dragon carcass that is rotting away in a dark polluted body of water there is going to be a green orb and a black orb that are on this side so let's not forget that we're going to set our 30 second timer and that's going to give our players the opportunity to talk to each other back and forth and they can use their movement and action to take one of the orbs from the wall, send or receive it to the other side and then replace it into the mural on their side of the puzzle rooms. And of course, once our timer is expired, we're going to need to move to whoever's next in the initiative order. But before we move on, let's take a look at our solution for Alcove 2. Our wizard is going to take the green orb and send it over to the rogue. And our rogue is going to take the blue orb and send it over to the wizard. Our wizard then can put the blue and black orb into the wall here. And our rogue can put the green and the red. And that's going to solve the puzzle. As you recall, this is a mountain with vegetation and forest. Red is going to symbolize mountains and fire and things of that nature. Green is our vegetation so this is going to be red and green and in alcove 2b we have the blue because we have a body of water and we're going to introduce the color black which is going to symbolize things like pollution and dirty and murky and even death and since we have a dragon carcass that is polluting this water here this is going to be blue and black once the correct orbs are set into the wall of alcoves 2a and 2b the murals are going to change from grayscale to full color and we've now successfully completed two portions of this three-part puzzle. So now our third alcove in both of the puzzle rooms is now active, but before we go into part three, we need to check back in with the rest of the party. Now after the second round, our fighter and cleric are continuing to defend themselves. We have our five minute timer or our D4 result that's going to dictate when more ghouls can arrive. But again, on that initiative count five, we're going to raise the water level again and it's gonna go from one foot to two feet of water. So now not only do we have ghouls, but we have this hazard of the water starting to rise and fill the room. But of course, this is the more difficult way to run this puzzle. Perhaps you have already decided not to use the water at all, or the water only rises if the player character is trying to solve the puzzle, put an orb in the incorrect position. Now that's going to be the end of round two. We'll then go to the top of round three, where on initiative count 20, our ghouls are going to take their turn. But let's get back to our wizard and our rogue and see how they're doing with the puzzle. So our rogue and our wizard are now looking at the grayscale murals in alcoves 3A and 3B. 
In 3A, we have a grayscale painting of a barren, flat land scattered with animal bones and remains. The sun is shining overhead. In Alcove 3B, this is going to be a grayscale painting of a lush field of wild trees and grasslands with the sun shining overhead. In Alcove 3A, we have two white orbs. And in Alcove 3B, we have a green orb and a black orb. Now the solution for the third part of this puzzle is for the rogue to take one of the white orbs and send it over to the wizard and for the wizard to send the black orb over to the rogue and then they are to place them in their respective murals. Now the reason for this solution in Alcove 3A is that our black orb is going to represent death and this is a painting of a barren flat land scattered with animal bones and remains and we're going to introduce another new orb. This one is going to be the white orb and this one's going to represent light and with this painting having the sun shining overhead it's providing light to the land below so the correct answer is the black and white orb and then in alcove 3b we have a lush field of wild trees and grasslands again represented by the green orb and there is a sun shining overhead providing light and that is going to be our white orb when the adventurers get these orbs correctly put in place, then the murals in 3A and 3B are going to go from grayscale to full color. And now that all three portions of this puzzle have been solved correctly, then the two archways are going to reappear. And after completing the puzzle, the ghouls are going to stop spawning, the water levels are going to go down, and a new portal is going to appear that will take the party to a different place to continue their adventure. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the puzzle? Is this something that you would run in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? And did you notice that this is very closely related to all the colors in Magic the Gathering? Be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and on to the next.